So guys, we're gonna talk about the referee hold, which if you've spent time in high school wrestling room or college wrestling, whatever else, to a lesser extent, we, we talk about this in BJJ rooms. We refer to it as the collar tie, okay? Hand out here, if, you're, if you got someone a little combat experience, they're not gonna tell you to do the neck, they're gonna tell you to be closer to that little bottom, bottom uh, curve of the head. Why? Because if I hold the neck, he can bring his head up and look at me again. Now I have less of an effective hold. If I migrate it up just a little and make a little claw in my hand, move your head up, it's a lot harder. And then the second is on his tricep, also with this little claw shape, okay? And he does the same thing to me, okay? And what we might do, and let's actually switch angles, what we might be doing here is exchanging opportunities for head dominance. So right now we're head neutral. Our heads are just driving in one over their shoulder. But if I cut a little bit of an angle and drive in, or if he does, suddenly we're like fencers who are cutting angles. He can now drive me with his head and look what it does to my body. So historically, the context, the reason they called this referee's hold is they did it when people stalled. People do this automatically now. But back in the days of catch wrestling, if, if both guys were just kind of circling around, not really aggressively exposing any of their own vulnerabilities to take a risk, then they'd say, okay, make the referee's hold because you guys aren't making enough aggressive action. Now we have this collar tie. So we're accustomed to socially giving each other this collar tie now in modern wrestling, and you'll see it in Nogi BJJ too, less often in gi. But back in the day, the whole point of it was it was a uh, intervention by the ref because people were stalling. So of course now people build whole games around it, right? People become experts at different collar time manipulations, duck unders, okay? Head tilt, uh, cow catch series, all kinds of stuff. But before we go any further in the discussion of things that you can do from referee hold, you gotta know that that was the context. So as moderns, what does that tell us? Maybe if you're not actually a, a collar tie expert or if you haven't built a particular game from collar tie, and if you don't have to go to collar tie, don't do it, right? So you'll see people just, when, when they don't have to, you'll still see them both going for it. Even when, in my opinion, one or the other guy is not a collar tie expert. So that's our takeaway. This is one of the rewards of studying history. If you don't have to do it, don't. If you become a collar tie expert from one angle or another, great, do collar tie, do referee hold. But otherwise, check out where it came from in history and let that be part of your lesson.